Hi, welcome to Nokri Learning. My name is Kanika Garg. I've done my PhD in artificial intelligence and machine learning and has total of eight years of experience in machine learning, deep learning and natural language processing. Today, uh, I'm going to discuss uh, uh, on sentiment analysis and have a hands-on session on sentiment analysis based on product reviews. So these are the topics that I'm going to cover in today's session. Uh, first, we'll talk about the sentiment analysis basics. Then we will talk about the review data set that we are going to use today for our code. And finally, we will look upon the Google Collab no notebook for the code. Now, uh, let's talk about a little of the sentiment analysis. Sentiment analysis is also called as opinion mining, emotional AI, et cetera. So it is basically an algorithm or say a way of determining uh, the opinions of the masses about a specific topic. So basically it helps in determining whether the piece that is written in front of us is positive, negative, or maybe neutral. So uh, basically with the growth of social media, blogs, discussion forums, and online review sites, Major companies have, uh, you know, come to realize that being sentiment aware can help them gain insights into user behavior. Uh, so it basically combines natural language processing and machine learning techniques to understand what underlies the piece of code, a piece of text, basically. So what it does is it design, it assign the weighted sentiment scores to the entities, topics, themes, and then categorize those sentences based upon the content or the polarity they have. So this is the basic thing that we must understand about sentiment analysis. So the major task that it does is that it classifies the sentences or the text in distinct categories of positivity based on their positivity, negativity, or maybe their, their neutrality. Okay. So the resources that we are going to use today are, of course, this one is the Google Collab for which we are using for Python and the interface it has is of Jupyter. And then our review data set that is, uh, I've taken from Kaggle, of course, and it is Amazon Alexa review data set. This data set has five columns, the dating, uh, the rating, date, variation, their verified reviews and the feedback about the reviews. Okay, so they might have a feedback of one or maybe zero, not more than one. So uh, we'll take this data set for our coding part. So let's code. So this is the Google Collab. Uh, this is how it looks. It kind of give a feel of Jupyter Notebook. So before, doing we need to upload our data to it or we can just provide a google drive link to it so i've already uploaded my data called as uh, amazon alexa.csv csv is basically the tab separated file like csv is the comma separated file so i've uploaded my data here so whenever you want to upload the data just go you can just go to this icon drive icon and then you can just upload your data from here Okay, it's look, it will look like this. And if you want to mount your drive, you can just go here and you mount your drives and then you can directly see the contents of your drive and can use all those content or the files here in the Google Collab directly. My reason being using the Google Collab is even if your RAM is low or you do not have a say GPU or something, it will help you uh, with the processing part because it has the virtual GPUs running for you. Okay, so I would rather prefer uh, Google Collab instead of Jupyter Notebook because that can be slow sometimes. First of all, we need to import some important libraries. Like here we can have NumPy, Pandas and NLTK. NLTK is basically used for natural language toolkit. We may or may not need NumPy. Let's see that we will see in our future course. So. I'm just importing all of these. If you want, you can skip it as of now. Whenever we will re be requiring it, we will import it again. So this is a pre-written code. I just have done it for you know saving some time because I'm a little slow in writing the code. Now, what I have done is I have imported the files. Now, what I want is I want to count number of lines 
in all the reviews we have in Amazon Alexa. Okay. So for that, I'm using this uh, strip for each line in the file, Amazon Alexa. And then we are going to finally find out the length of our data frame here. So it has basically 3151 total length or say the number of lines in our all the reviews, okay? Now, finally, I am going to read this file, Amazon Alexa using pandas in a data frame so i'm of course i have imported pandas already but okay just so you understand i'm doing it here again after doing that i just want to see how my data looks like so i've used uh, dfreview.head so it will give you top five uh, say entries of your data frame so if you can see it has uh, it has given you top five entries and it has given you uh, all the columns. So it has five columns, as I have told earlier, rating, date, variation, verified reviews, and the feedback. Rating is out of five. So it's basically from one to five. Then we are using, uh, they have the date when the comment has been made and the variation of the Alexa. The Alexa could be of the charcoal fabric or for the walnut finish, whatever it is then the reviews about it and the feedbacks. So feedbacks are generally in our data sets are either one or zero. Now to further understand the data, let's just do some basic exploration. Uh, when I can also, okay, I for exploration, I'm going to use here is as describe that works on the data frame. So what it will give is it will give you basic description of all the Continuous variables. Okay, now if you can see in our data, only the rating and the feedback are the numerical values, whereas date, variation, and verified, these are not the uh, numerical variables. Rather, this is complete text and this is the categorical variable. So this describe variable only, uh, describe function works only on the numerical data. So it has given us the count. So of course, the count is common. Then the mean, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, and all these values. Now, what we are going to do, do is uh, we are creating or making a new column. We are appending a new column to our data frame where it will contain the length of each fee, uh, review. Okay, because I just want to know how long my reviews are. So maybe it can help me in further course somewhere. They may or they may not be helpful, but for our sake, we are just doing it. So what I'm doing is I'm appending a column called as length. And where what I'm doing is I am using this column, verified reviews, and then finally just applying the length function over it. Okay. This is how I'll get. Now, if you can see the length column has been appended here and the length of all the verified reviews are given here. Okay, then finally, I just want to see uh, the length on the plot. So I'm plotting it kind of a histogram. So if I can see here, it will show us the frequency of almost all the reviews of different lengths. Okay, so now here it is unclear what could be the maximum length of a review because that could be only a single value, which is difficult to show here. So let's find out the maximum length of the review. Again, I'm using a describe, uh, describe function, but now specifically on only the length column. So let's see. Now, if you see here, the maximum length that came here is 2851. Okay, now I just want to see the review which has this length. So what I'm going to do is on this column, I am using this parameteric value. Okay, so whenever it equals this length, what I'm going to find out is the verified review. Okay, so when I run this, I'll get this piece of information. That means it's kind of a complete paragraph somebody has written as a review about the Alexa. Okay. So now that depends on us. If we do not have fixed length and unlimited number of space, 
तो पर्सन कैन राइट एनीथिंग दे वांट राइट नाउ लेट्स रीड आर डेटा सेट इन टू अ डेटा सेट डेटा फ्रेम नेम्ड एज डेटा सेट देन आई एम डाउनलोडिंग द स्टॉप वर्ड्स stop words are those words which are not necessary for natural language processing uh in our case if i talk about is is the english stop words here because our all the amazon alexa reviews are in english so the stop words are like uh, in uh, the are uh, okay the, those are the words that we generally do not need for our processing part because their frequency is much higher than the content words so if we keep those stop words in our text they are gonna um, interfere with the processing of the words and it will be difficult for us to process it for the positivity and the negativity then okay further uh, after downloading the stop words i am just cleaning the data for that i am using the regular expression the natural language toolkit uh, the stop words of course and finally the stemmer so what the stemmer do is it will give us the stem words of all the word that we have in our text so first uh i have applied all these things to clean my text okay after doing that uh we'll be creating a bag of word model okay bag of word model means that uh is focused on a uh, counting of the words or the counting of the vectors for that i am using count vectorizer and it has been imported from sk learn feature extraction so this is basically a feature extraction method that works on frequency so we are using here is this frequency method so after creating the bag of words model or say when we extract our features the final work to do is to train the data set into the training and the testing data set okay because whatever data we have we have to train our model using that data and then we have to test our data whether it is working fine or not so the ideal way of splitting is in the 80 20 uh, scenario that means 80% data is for training set and 20% data set is for testing so here i am using a train test split and i am we are going to divide our data into x train x test y train y test using 20% test data okay we are using random state zero here is as because whenever uh, the value is zero that means the randomization will be minimum that means whenever we are going to use this it will definitely it will always split the data into the same sets okay otherwise if it it has a different value it will the split will always be different now we have our uh, say the training data the test set uh, test set and then we have our features now finally we come to the stage we have to train our model okay so first we have to decide upon the model here i am using random classify uh, random forest classifier but if you want you can use naive base you can use uh, svm or you can use max entropy you can use decision trees okay so these are the available models that you can use any time now i'm using random forest because it's basically the upper version of say decision trees where multiple decision trees have been used to decide upon the final outcome so as per my understanding or experience or the previous works that i have seen the random classif random forest classifier generally perform good for classification tasks maximum of the time it gives uh, good results okay and even comparable uh, to the other state of state of the art machine learning models so but you are free to use any model you want this is not that you have to just stick with the random forest classifier you can experiment with other models then i am using 100 trees in the random forest but if you want you can just change this value and see how this will impact your results okay so i am going to use classifier.fit command to fit our model to the data okay then finally the time is, has come to predict the test results now to understand the text results 
either i can simply use the accuracy or we can have a confusion matrix out of which we, we can find out the values of precision and recall or maybe f2 score f1 score etc so uh, for sk11 matrix i am going to use both the confusion matrix as well as the accuracy score the accuracy score is going to tell me exactly the exact average outcomes that it has so if i can see here when i'm passing the actual test values and the predicted y values the actual y values and the predicted y values we can see that the accuracy that we have achieved is like around 94 percent just not bad right it's quite good so if we, you know we want to increase or maybe we want to experiment we can you can just use this n estimators variable or say hyperparameter. So you can just try and change these values and see what happens. So the accuracy score may go up, it may go down. This is just random number that I've tried here. All right. Now, again, for the confusion matrix, say this is the confusion matrix and you can just see here, this is the true positives that we have and these are the true negatives that we have, okay? So this is how your confusion matrix looks like. So this is pretty much about uh, how you can implement sentiment analysis using Python or maybe a Google Colab, which shows us the Jupyter environment. And I have used the random forest classifier. Again, I'm telling you that you can use any classifier you want and you can experiment with the values of the hyperparameter so that you can understand how these impact our results. Okay, so let's move on to uh, the further slides then. Now, these are the some courses that are recommended if you want to learn more about sentiment analysis or want to get a little more hands on. So these are the providers of uh, the courses, the Great Learning and Coursera. You can find a numerous courses on Coursera or you can visit the Nokri Learning link where you can get such courses together combined in at one place. So you can just go and search the Nokri uh, Learning platform and you will, uh, you will get various courses combined from all the platforms along with their own content. Okay, so these are some courses and you can visit other courses as well. Finally, thank you for bearing with me. Uh, and if you like the video, please like and subscribe nokrilearning.com. Thank you.